All right, so we're going to do the uh, bouncing ball uh, assignment. The assignment for this is uh, you're going to do two seconds of rolling. The ball is going to bounce, and then you're going to do two seconds of rolling at the end of it. Okay, so this is not set up correctly. This is just a quick little demo so I can show you uh, the gist of this. I have my cameras. All right, so I just have, um, I've just duplicated it a few times and moved it around. Okay, so. I have my rolling, my bounces, and then my rolling again. Okay, now you're gonna have at least three major bounces. So this is one major bounce here because it actually has some height to it. That's another major bounce. And then this one, that little bounce at the end doesn't really count as a bounce because it's just kind of like the transition into the actual uh, rolling stage of it. Okay, now you can see that it rolls very nicely. It pancakes down because it's about to launch up into the air. It stretches out a bit. It flattens out a bit. Stretches out a bit. Flattens out a bit. Everything that we did the first two times we did the bouncing ball assignment is in there, plus a little bit of extra stuff that um, you know, little finessing things that we talked about. Okay. Now, one of the reasons I have several balls in here is to show a couple things off. Okay. So we're going to go to like an action type shot here like this. Now I'm going to render this ball. All right, it looks fantastic. Uh, you can see that there's a little texture on here. There's a little bit of reflection. Fancy. Now I'm going to render the other ball. So I'm going to hit the little save button. All right, so now here's the other ball. And you can see this one has what's called motion blur on it. It makes it look like it's actually um, moving. Here's the old one. It's moving, but we don't really see it on that frame. Here's the other one. It's moving, and it looks like it's actually moving. Okay, even though it's a still frame. Okay, here's another one in the background. It's just nothing really going on. All right, so motion blur is definitely going to be one of those things we want to add to this. Now, when I grade this, it's a little bit harder to grade uh, with the motion blur. So you're going to turn in two movies. One of them is with motion blur and one is without motion blur, okay? So you're basically rendering <clears throat> the same file twice with just different settings, right? So in your render settings, a little clapper up here, um, we switch to mental ray, okay? Because mental ray has a better uh, motion blur renderer. Uh, for your own personal reference, um, typically, I'm gonna say most people don't render out motion blur outside, like right in, the program because if you ever need to adjust it you basically have to just re-render everything so what people will typically do is render out either a 2d motion vector or a 3d motion vector uh, pass and then they'll use this inside of a program like nuke where you can adjust the motion blur after the fact all right so that's just a uh, little tidbit to keep in mind um, so under the quality tab inside mental ray I'm going to turn on this is unified sampling uh, I'm going to turn on down here where it says motion blur. It's defaulted to off. I'm going to set it to full because we're deforming some of the vertices, so I want to make sure that I capture that. There's some other settings like motion steps one, motion blur by, displaced motion factor, middle of frame, trapezoid, whatever. Here's just a sample of the different results you can get uh, with those different settings. I'm going to go back to the beginning. This is just some basic, like it's on right there. And then here it is with the, uh, I believe I turned the trapezoid feature on inside the render settings. This here was set to none box. I set it to trapezoid. It gives it just a different shape. Uh, makes it look a little bit more natural. <clears throat> you can see the grain. I'll show you how to fix that in a minute too. Um, this one here, okay, you can see these three images right here like this. Actually, it's these three-ish. Okay, these three here, this, this, and this, are all different choices that I've chosen for this middle of frame, starter frame, or end of frame. So basically it's trying to figure out where it is that we have that keyframe set and how we want to handle the motion blur for it. So you may want to just do some tests just to see which one's going to look better. Obviously this one here is just too sharp. Uh, this one is okay. Um, and this one's okay too. Uh, I think I actually went with this one. I 
think. Uh, I forget which one I ended up with. I think it's middle of frame. This is the one I, I ended up going with. Okay. So there's some other settings that we can adjust to. Obviously, we can do that. To get rid of, um, you can do motion blur by, you know, five frames or by 10 frames or whatever it is, depending on what your motion is. For this, one frame is going to be plenty, and you may even want to cut it down to a half a frame just because of the kind of motion that we're going to get. Okay? So I'm setting this to one in my case, but you may find that if you have something that happens super quick, like this transition here, if you see I have the two keyframes there, if you didn't have the two keyframes there for some reason that you weren't paying attention to something, um, then you would be missing out on that. Okay? And then you would have uh, it trying to blur over one frame. So basically it's trying to blur this, this, and that, or this and that, together, and it's going to look funky. Okay? So sometimes you have to cut this in half to 0.5 or 0.25 or whatever. All right? Go to an area where you have a lot of change, stuff like this area here, so that you can see that change happening. Don't go up to the top here where there's not a lot of motion. It's actually, you know, kind of stationary a bit. You don't want to go to an area like that. You want to go where there's fast motion happening so you can really see what it's going to look like in the extreme of it. All right. So this is all I changed. I turned this on to full. I set that to trapezoid. I played with this one just to see which one I like best, and I believe it was middle of frame I, I enjoyed the best. Um, you may have to play with your motion blur by value. And then up here at the top, I had to crank the quality up. You can see if I go back to the beginning of these, how grainy this is. Crazy grain. And then I went and eventually added that at the end. And now there is still some grain here, you can see. But it's definitely not as grainy as it was. And I'm actually zoomed in a bit. There we go. That's, that's zoomed out. So that's pretty good right there. All right. Now we can crank this up even higher and you know really get rid of light green, but we don't want to because it's just going to add more render time. This took a minute and 13 just for this. With the low quality, it was taking about 6 seconds, 11 seconds, whatever. Okay, So it's going to take some time. So you're going to go and um, set up your camera. All right. Now here I set up a couple cameras. This is perspective view, which I kind of moved. Uh, okay, I want to show this here. All right, this one is okay, but it's just too far back. If we were to render this out, we wouldn't be able to really see. I'm focusing on just one ball, not all of them. We wouldn't be able to really see the animation of the ball um, from this far away, and it doesn't really create a dynamic look. Okay, now we don't want to shoot it from head on. Okay, we talked about staging. It's hard to get a good look to this by just having it come straight at us okay we see a lot of motion in this sideways movement so that's what we want to showcase now if we don't have a texture on the ball the ball is basically flat we can't see that it's rolling okay i'll click off of it you can't see that the ball is rolling so that's why i put this texture on here so i can see that it's rolling you don't want to go crazy with it obviously you could go crazy and you can still see that it's rolling, but it might look ugly. Okay, remember, part of the 12 principles of animation is appeal. We want this to be appealing. Okay. And I believe I've captured most of the 12 steps of animation. There's not a whole lot of uh, some of them that I can really do. We have the easing in and easing out. You see how we kind of start up. And we go there. We have the anticipation where it's down. We have the movement going up. We have squashing and stretching. We have arcs. We have appeal. We have 3D solid lines, whatever those the other ones were. We'll go through and check the list before we actually render this out. Okay. Um, so make sure that you can see that the ball is rotating and it's cool. Okay. I'm not actually going to use this one. I'm not going to use these ones. I'm going to focus on that one. Now I'm going to jump to, here's another bad camera that people, and this is what people do, they set up this really bad camera. So I'm going to hit play so you can see what it looks like. 
okay? I can't see anything that's going on there. This is a bad camera. This is not a good camera. You don't want this to happen. Here's the camera move for this. Look how subtle it is. Okay. Now you may want to put some texture on the ground. I'm just using Lambert's and Blends just so it goes quicker. But I may want to add a uh, checkerboard to this. Hopefully I won't crash by doing that. There we go. Um, there we go. Something like that. Okay, so I don't want to go actually with something like this. You're going to have some sort of scene set up where the ball is interacting or moving around things. You could have the ball jumping through hoops. You could have kind of like horse stables. I don't know, something. Jumping and bouncing into a basketball net and then rolling. Something, okay? I'm just using this just so we can see it moving. Okay, so there's the ball. It's moving uh, nicely. I have it framed pretty good. You can see there's a little bit of space at the beginning. And at the end, there's probably maybe a little bit too much space. So I can always click on the camera here. That's how we select the camera. And I can nudge this over here like that and then reset my key. Okay. So let me go through the process of just creating a camera. So I go to Panels, Perspective, New. I click on this blue circle here. And I line up my camera. Okay. Now I can go over here to the focal length and increase this. This is, or decrease it. So this is set to 10. You see that really distorts the ball that's with it really low. So I don't want to go that low. So typically I'll go to like 25, maybe 20. Okay, and I'm just lining this up. I want to be able to see the floor and whatever else. So I'm at the beginning. I'm going to hit S to set my key. The ball's in a good position. I'm going to play, go to the end, and then set another key. Okay, If it goes out of frame, I'm not just going to follow it. I'm going to try to do something else, like maybe just uh, back up a little bit. So I'm going to go back here. There we go. And then we'll take a look and see. There we go. That looks pretty good. We don't get too close to the top there. Let me do a little zooming in, zooming out. Okay, so that doesn't look uh, terrible. That actually looks pretty good. So we would create some lights. So maybe I would create uh, a spotlight in this case. If you had me for intro, basically like the lighting setup we did for uh, Pac-Man works. Make sure we know where he's going. He's going that way. So I just hit T so I can get this manipulator. I'm going to make my cone angle a little bit bigger. Give it some drop offs. Let's go 100. All right, I'm going to go in with the shadows on the light and say use ray trace. It's on. Good. I'm going to give it a light radius of 1, shadow rays of 10. Okay, it's hard to see because of the black there, but it's there. Okay, I can see that it's there. I'm not going to take the time to play with it. Um, but if I needed to make it a little bit softer, I can take this more. That'll create a softer shadow. Um, and then if I increase this number, I have to also increase that number. So 10 for the light radius, 50 for the rays. Okay. So I have my camera set up. Uh, am I still in my camera? No, I'm not. I'm going to switch back to my camera, which is Perspective 1. Okay, let me give it a name. So I'm going to click on Select Camera here. And call this Render Cam. Good. I'm going to go to my Render Settings. I'm going to go to this and say Bouncy Ball. 
Mold Blur, Sarcona. Actually, let's switch that. Sarcona, Mold Blur. There we go. Uh, ifs are fine. Name dot number dot extension. One through, in this case, it's 75. But yours will be longer, uh, most likely. Which camera? I'm using the render cam. 960 by 540, that's good. Uh, that's fine there. My quality is back up to 3. This is the one with motion blur. I did turn on final gather just so I would have um, a little bit more bounce light or a little bit of bounce light in the scene. So 50.5 and 50 are my settings for this. <clears throat> now that this is set, I would go to a rendering menu and say batch render. Hit the button and let it go through. Okay. So as this thing is pumping stuff out, I didn't set my project, which you guys I know will do. Now this is still set to a different one, but it'll start to show you know where the work is being saved to. There it goes. So I want to make sure that after this starts, after I get one frame out, right now it's rendering frame one, that I go through and I check frame one and make sure frame one looks good. So right now it's doing 15% of frame one. When it's at 100% of frame one done, I'm going to go look at that and make sure it's still cool. Okay? I'm just going to cancel it now. Then I'm going to go through, after that's done, and say motion blur off. Bouncy ball, sarcona. And then no, mo blur. And then go through render, go to batch render again, hit batch render and close. And there it goes. Okay. Now, if you're rendering at the school, you want to right click down here and say Start Task Manager. And you want to go through and make sure that Maya Batch is at 25% at least. I'm actually rendering something in Maya Batch right now. Um, and I'm surprised I'm allowed to render out two things in Maya Batch. That's peculiar. Hmm. Look into that. Uh, but anyway, you want to right click on it and go to set priority and make sure it's set to below normal. Okay, that way um, if someone else comes on the computer, they're not going to be affected by it. They won't shut your stuff down. Okay. Even if you're not going to be leaving the computer, it's always best to set it to below normal. Because otherwise it'll screw you up. And what would happen is, you know, if anything... Uh, the computer just will jump up to 100% when it's not being used and then slow down when it is being used. So it's not a bad thing. All right, so when you turn in this assignment, it's going to be two files. One of them is going to be bouncy ball, two seconds of rolling, three major bounces, two seconds of rolling at the end, okay, with motion blur, and then another one, same exact thing, just re render out the same exact file without motion blur. Don't do the assignment twice, okay? But this is a brand new thing you're creating. This isn't, you know, using the ones from the previous ones we did. Start from scratch and rebuild this thing into something very cool. You can use Google, find some images, find some, not images, but find some reference for bouncy balls, okay? Or find some ideas. This one is a CG one. Never use a CG animation as your reference. Okay, bouncing ball reference. And you will pull up videos of bouncing balls all over the place. This one is pretty good because they have a bunch of different kinds of bouncing balls. And you can see what they look like. I think at some point, maybe this is... Alright, well I lied. There's one that looked just like this. And they brought in just a whole bunch of bouncing balls. So there's a ping pong ball bouncing. And you see how it bounces compared to other things. There you go. This is, this is the one that uh, I was thinking of. There's a tennis ball. And of course you can shoot your own reference videos too. If you want to just bounce a tennis ball on the floor and see how it's going to bounce or bounce a basketball and see how it's going to bounce that's fine it's always good to get that kind of reference okay so use YouTube as kind of like your reference uh, getter uh, and then that's it okay now, I've obviously simplified it 
it's going to be a bit diff more difficult than just kind of making a ball bounce and doing whatever. Uh, one trick that I did to the camera also, just so you can see it, is whenever I take a camera, I like the start of the camera and the end of the camera to be linear. Okay, the middle can be um, nice and smooth. I don't know if it doesn't have anything like this. Okay, but I don't like the um, start and the end to be flat just because I like to have that linear look. It makes it look like we still have a shot going on. And sometimes the camera slows down a little bit too much. Also, if you look at the ball, um, I have a lot more keyframes in here than we went through just because I wanted to create a, just a different level of uh, realism in the ball. Okay, you can see what these hills look like. And I'm going to tell you, this one I did actually go through and kind of do it in stages, like step by step. That one should be down more. Okay, instead of going through and doing like 1, 10, 20, 30, 50, whatever it was, uh, I went through and just set up this pose. I went up and set up these poses, this pose, set up these, <clears throat> and then I tweaked a lot of that in the graph editor to make it look good. Okay, once you get to a certain level, you'll be at that stage. If you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. Okay, so that's it. Any questions, let me know.